Imagine you guys shaking his head. Yeah, that's very cool. All right, uh, very excited today because we're here with Orianthe, and that was the uh, first single off your own album, uh, uh, according to you, which is yeah. very impressive. Uh, a lot of people, obviously, we'll get this out of the way quick because I'm more interested in what you do uh, and your music than, you know, obviously we'll talk about the whole Michael Jackson thing, but uh, you, you know, you've gotten yourself on the map with the movie, but your your music here, uh, which most people I think are surprised when they when they see you pick up the acoustic and you've got your original piece there. Uh, how long have you been doing the, uh, I guess, the music thing personally? This has been like a lifelong, uh, from what I've read, lifelong with you, right? Yeah, yeah, I picked up guitar when I was six, and um, I just uh, I just love playing, you mm -hmm. know, and I actually started writing when I was six as well. I used to listen to Elvis songs and Roy Orbison and Beatles and um, at six? At six, yeah, I used to strum along. You're like, you know, people are going to so be like going to Google going, who is Roy Orbison? And they're oh, going to okay. be like, who, who is this guy? You know, people are going, I don't even yeah. know who that is, you know? Yeah, so. I used to listen to those records and um, my dad was a guitar player, so the guitar's all around the house and he would teach me how to strum, you know, just like A chords and, mm -hmm. and G and whatnot. And the impossible F chord. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I've been playing since um, I was 12, so I was excited for you coming in today because oh, everyone's, cool. everyone's amping it up saying, you know, she's, she's phenomenal. You see the videos online and it's like, yeah, I'm a little intimidated when you you show up. Everyone's like, you play guitar, you got guitar singing in your office. I'm like, sure, but she can, she puts me, yeah, my friends are like, what are they going to do when she's like eight miles ahead of you playing? I'm like, oh, she, that's what she's here for. So you got picked up online, you were on the, you putting your videos up on YouTube and everything once you started building yourself up, if I'm not mistaken. Um, yeah, well, actually, um, I started strumming when I was like six, and then I picked up electric when I was 11, because I studied classical when I was 10, mm -hmm. after seeing Santana perform, and, um, and, and I got to jam with Carlos when I was 18. He came to Adelaide, Australia, and and, uh, and he's my idol. He's the reason why I picked up electric guitar. And when he mm -hmm. came to Australia, I sort of bombarded him with like CDs and press kits, and I just wanted to meet him. I yeah. My guitar sign, and he invited me to sound check, and I got to jam with him, which was just incredible um, to do that. And I was so nervous, and then he got me up on stage to jam with his band, and then invited me on the stage um, that night in front of a hometown crowd of like fifteen thousand people. What, what's it? What, what goes through your mind when you've got somebody of Carlos Santana's nature yeah. saying, "Hey"? Why don't you come up on stage and play? I mean, what goes uh, through your I'm mind? I'm so nervous. Like so nervous. You know, he's. I look up to him immensely, and and same with Steve Vai. You know, those yeah, yeah. are my idols. And I got to open for Steve when I was 15 in Adelaide, Australia, and I was so nervous because my first ever support. Um, and after I got off the stage, I didn't have a band with me. I just had a backing tape. So I got up there in front of all these. And just played with music <laughs> playing behind you. Yeah, you were just yeah. standing there by yourself. Nobody else could. No, they could nobody was looking at anybody else but you. Yeah, it was. Uh, Really daunting, and then um, afterwards, Steve got on stage with his miners' light and lasers and shredding like there's no tomorrow. And and I was like, oh my god, there is no way that I would have supported him if he had well played on that stage if he had gotten up before, if you know what I mean. Yeah. So he and he kept in contact with me since then and has been a, a huge support and just been really encouraging. And I would send him MP3s of my demos, and he would send me back emails and and uh, and I actually supported him around America for like six dates um, a couple of years ago and. We actually got to write, write a song together for this record called Highly Strung, and it's a real honor Very to cool. work with him. And um, it's instrumental on on, uh, on Believe, and um, it's one of the last couple of tracks I think. And and we have so much fun. We had so much fun playing it. So I challenge anybody to go online and find something from Steve Vai. <coughs> the guy's fingers move so fast. Oh yeah, it's I scary. I mean, you, you yeah, think to yourself, how does he do what he does on the guitar? And that's very similar. You can see where your style comes from with a lot of your uh, your techniques and all. <coughs> uh, you know, fast forward to, with Michael Jackson now. Um, a lot of people, I'm sure, after seeing the movie. Um, and first of all, before we get into that, what was it like for you? I mean, I, I take it you've seen, I mean, you lived it, but yeah. seeing it, yeah. what was what was that like, sitting there watching it, rather than knowing that, okay, I remember doing all of this with him, and now yeah. you're watching this on TV, on the big screen. Uh, it, was, it was really hard. I didn't know how I was going to sit through it. Um, it was really emotional the first time I saw the film, and, um, you know, because you, you have memories of things, and sometimes they fade, you know, somewhat, and, and actually, there's one part of the movie where, He's telling me to hit my highest notes, and um, and that part, you know, I remember that when he did it. But I was so nervous at that point because mm -hmm. I just wanted to make him happy and hit that high note, you know. So I was like trying to find it. I had a noise gate on my amp too. So really, yeah, it was cutting off, you know, because it had to be really quiet after I finished rocking out dead silence, you know, because okay. everyone's got in ears in and you can pick up every sound. So um, really having to, you know, just stretch out that note and hold it because he wanted it to sustain and and. Uh, and you know, I love that amp that I'm using, the angle. But I had to, I had to put a noise gate on it just to make sure it didn't, you know, make any noise in between. And, and he's like, hit your highest note, and he has such a high voice. So yeah. I was like, 
I was like, uh, hitting the note, and thank God I found it. <laughs> yeah, that's got to be impressive. Uh, uh, when you, you've named Steve Vai uh, a wizard with guitar, you've yeah. s Carlos Santana. What was it like working with Michael, yeah. who, you know, is a creative genius on his own? Oh, yeah. But, you know, I mean, I've never seen him pick up a guitar and play like some of the other guys that you've worked with. I mean, what was that like, having to cater to what he's looking for? And I mean, was it difficult to, to find in yourself to be able to play through? Because I mean, he may ask you to do something. Uh, yeah, and you're like, yeah. Uh, yeah, well, he um, he wanted everything to sound like right on. I mean, um, he was a perfectionist, but he was such a kind person with that. You know, he if he wanted anything changed, like sounds or or parts, he usually just wanted us to play all the rhythm parts with a lot of attitude mm -hmm. to them. You know, he didn't want it to be just sort of fluffy. <laughs> all right, you know, that it had makes to sense. be real sort of just there. Uh -huh. You know, and uh, and and so it was. I learned so much. You know, I, I definitely stepped up as a rhythm player and. Um, and he just wanted the best out of everybody, just to do our best, but to have fun, to project our energy and not to be nervous, you know. And, and um, I definitely stepped up as a performer and as a rhythm player and lead player and everything because he just, he just got the best out of everybody, you know, because we all were fans of his. So as soon as he got on that stage, we just wanted to make him happy, you know. How long did it take you to pick up all of his material? Um, or once the set list for the show was made, were you pretty much set and said, okay, I can do this? Or? Yeah, we had two or three songs to learn a night and then come back the next day and play you know, with the band. And, um, they would, you know, we would record our rehearsals too. So um, the musical director would listen to it back and make sure that it sounded good, you know. Um, so we were rehearsing as a band, I think, for the first month to get all the material down pat and make sure it was right on. And Michael would come in and out and listen to us and um, tell us what he heard because he wanted it to sound really similar to the record. So when the fans heard it, you know, they didn't feel like cheated or anything, you know. They, they felt like they, you know, saw an amazing show mm -hmm. visually but also the music to match that to make it perfect so how about your own material um was it was your your album was that finished before uh yeah. coming in or okay because yeah. i was well, going to say was that of, did you find it difficult to go back and forth from uh, working with michael then putting your own material together yeah some people it's funny some people think that you know suddenly i've just gone to the studio and recorded this record in mm -hmm. a couple of weeks you know yeah. just go in there and like you know put it down but now this record i've been working on for about uh, three years. First year coming over to LA and, and writing it, and then um, two years off and on working with Howard Benson, who's a great producer, and and uh, it's got it's a real rock pop record. I love commercial music, so I wanted to incorporate the '80s sort of now guitar solos in a really you know sort of pop rock record, and and we kind of just um, you know with working with Howard, we recorded 18 tracks for the record, okay. and narrowed it down to 11, and just chose the best tracks for the record, and. And my goal was to make something that people could put on their cars and not want to change, you know. Because the thing that I sort of just like about writing CDs is that sometimes you buy them and then there's like one track, which is okay. Yeah, there's like one or two yeah. tracks, you're like, okay, everything else is just eh, but you're... Yeah, so we focused in on the chorus just to make sure they were catchy and the parts were, you know, the guitar parts were there for a reason. It wasn't just like a whole bunch of stuff, you know. You're not just um, playing a solo for the fact that you can solo. You're putting it in to complement the song almost. Yeah, yeah, it's just complement, yeah, all the rhythm parts and everything and... and um, yeah, I'm really proud of this record. It's um, it you know, it's definitely I think an empowering record, and I really want to inspire more female guitar players. So, uh, with the video clip for "According to You," it's um, kind of a an ode to I guess guitar hero in a way. We've got the guitar neck. We actually fixed a a poor Reed Smith guitar neck to the to the camera. So, yeah, I've seen that. I was yeah. watching that a couple of times. I was like, I, yeah. I was trying to figure out what the point was. Like, was, that, was that like a camera watching you play, or was that somebody else? I didn't um, know what that. Other people trying to trying to play the, the song, you know, and just all different people, you know, young and old, and um, you know, and just all trying to you know play the guitar, and and you can. And I just thought it was kind of a cool concept because it was all about the guitar, <coughs> you know, and and that was uh, what I wanted to make it about. So when kids see it, they want to, you know, I mean, I know that guitar here is big and that's really cool, but they want to pick up the real guitar as well, you know. Were you more of a fan of the acoustic or the electric? Electric. <laughs> okay. You want to play? Want to play a little? Yeah, yeah, totally. So that's what everybody's excited for. I know oh, we okay. want to hear you. We've got the uh, amplifiers in here set up too, so uh, we're going to let you plug in.